Hi, I'm Dr. Tala. Do you love that I'm filming here now? So there's just a couple of things that I want to say before we get into the cardiac x-rays. So the first one is this. I've been taking care of babies for some time now. And obviously, like all of us in the unit, sometimes we're worried that a baby with breathing issues or whatever does have a cardiac problem. I will say that not once have I called a cardiologist and they've been like, what does the x-ray look like? So they'll ask me what the gas is, what the blood work is like, what the physical exam is like, but really not what the x-ray is like. However, there really are a few clues that you can look at on the x-ray that can kind of guide you one way or other, whether this baby has a cardiac problem or not. And that's what this video is basically going to be about. The chest x-ray findings that you may see in babies with cardiac problems. The other thing that I want to say really quickly is that we always conveniently kind of classify the cardiac diseases, the cyanotic cardiac diseases, into like the five T's. And then we have the pulmonary atresia, the hyperplastic left heart syndrome, Epstein's and double outlet right ventricle. So kind of five T's and then fed, P-H-E-D. I'm not going to cover all of those in this video. We did film a video about a year ago on exactly that. So the link is below. Go check that out if you need kind of more background. Otherwise, go learn about all the x-rays and cardiac diseases. Before we go anywhere, let's just go over which chambers make up the silhouette of the heart on an x-ray. These are all adult x-rays, so just imagine a baby's heart to be relatively larger as compared to the size of the chest. Obviously, a baby's heart is smaller than an adult's heart, but it does take up a proportionally larger area of the chest. Also, though, the edges of the chambers in a baby are pretty much the same as an adult. So the top part of the cardiac silhouette is taken up pretty much all by the left atrium. The right side of the cardiac silhouette is pretty much all right atrium, and the left is mostly the left ventricle. So the right ventricle ends up being this little slither underneath here like that. And again, I've said this before, just as a quick reminder, remember when we're looking at chest x-rays, we are evaluating the chest x-ray as if the person that's having the x-ray taken is facing us. So this is the left side and that's the right side. And another quick reminder while we're at it, the normal heart size on a baby's chest x-ray can be up to 60% of the width of the chest. This depends a lot on the age of the baby as well as the baby itself. So get used to looking at your baby's chest x-rays. Generally, the younger the patient, the larger the heart can take up in the chest. This is a four-year-old's heart, so as you can see, it's probably around 35 to 40% of the chest width. Okay. Now, let's start with this x-ray, which was shown at the start of each Scrubs episode, which, for everyone who hasn't seen it, is arguably the funniest and the most realistic medical show ever. Honestly, I almost think that they did this on purpose, but what can you see in this chest x-ray? Yup, the heart is pointing to the right instead of the left. So this is what we call dextrocardia. This is a cartoon version of dextrocardia, which is a general term and literally means that the heart is on the right side of the chest. It happens in about 1 in 12,000 births. There are different types of dextrocardia. This is one version. This is called situs inversus totalis, which is also called mirror image dextrocardia, because literally everything in the body is switched over to the other side. By the way, sometimes we miss these on x-ray because we always assume maybe the x-ray was taken prone instead of supine. So maybe the x-ray was taken from the back instead of the front, which is why it's so important always that the x-rays are labeled. And you can see that it says left down here. So in situs and versus totalis, everything is switched over. As you can see, the heart and the stomach bubble are on the right side too. In this patient, the left lungs would have two lobes and the right lung would have three lobes and the appendix would be on the left side. These infants have a slightly higher incidence of congenital heart disease as compared to the general population, estimated to be about between 1 and 10%. This is another version of dextrocardia with situs solitus, where you can see the stomach bubble is on the opposite side of the heart. This situation has an extremely high incidence of congenital heart disease, 
up to about 90% and definitely warrants an echo if you ever see this. So apart from chest x-rays helping in diagnosing dextrocardia, how else can chest x-rays help in the diagnosis of heart disease? Well, let's move on to the cyanotic cardiac diseases now. These are the five T's that we talked about in a different video. I won't go over them in details, but just wanted to remind you of this mnemonic and of how to remember them using the numbers one to five. Again, we went over this in the cardiac video last year, so if you're interested, go look at that. And this is why I really wanted to talk about the five T's now, so we could talk about which one of them is associated with increased blood flow to the lungs. The mnemonic here is I love you in sign language, which has the thumb, the index finger, and the fifth finger all pointing upwards. Wherever these point upwards, we have increased blood flow to the lungs. So with the truncus, the transposition, as well as the total anomalous pulmonary venous return, they all are associated with increased blood flow to the lungs. Three and four, tricuspid atresia and tetralogy, are generally associated with decreased blood flow to the lungs. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is because another way chest x-rays can be super helpful in cardiac disease is by evaluating how much blood flow is going to the lungs. In fact, this may be the most important reason to get an x-ray in potential cardiac disease. Well, that and to rule out an actual respiratory or pulmonary problem. In this x-ray, you can see that the lungs look really wet or, or really white, and it's just kind of full of all these vascular markings. That's because this is a TAPVR, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection, or number five, which, as we already said, with, is your fifth finger, so it is associated with increased pulmonary blood flow. And this chest x-ray looks much darker, almost black in appearance, which means that you can hardly see any vascular markings at all. That's because this is an x-ray of an infant with pulmonary atresia, which means that very little blood was getting to the lungs. So it makes the lungs much, much darker. Another reason getting a chest x-ray may be helpful in diagnosing cardiac disease is if we're given a massive clue by spotting a right-sided aortic arch. As you all know, the aortic arch normally loops like this to the left. Sometimes, because something goes slightly wrong in development, the aortic arch may loop to the other side or the right side like this. This can happen in 1-2% to of the population and it can be isolated, so the rest of the heart itself is normal. But if a patient does have a right-sided aortic arch, they're much more likely to have a congenital heart defect, about 10 to 100 times that of the general populations. The main associations with a right aortic arch are truncus arteriosus, pulmonary atresia with ventricular septal defect, tetralogy of Fallot, tricuspid atresia, and transposition of the great arteries. So what do we see on this chest x-ray, which does have a right-sided aortic arch? You can kind of see this right-sided aortic arch when you see that there is no aortic kind of knuckle on the left side, so like a kind of knob on this side, and you can see this kind of aortic knuckle on the right side. So you can see kind of this extra knob here. It's not very obvious all the time, but if you get used to seeing it, you're much more likely to spot it. And another chest x-ray of a right-sided aortic arch. Again, unless you're looking for it, you are definitely going to miss it. Again, you can see these kind of bumps here on the right side. This all represents a right-sided aorta. If you do see a right-sided aortic arch, especially since you're probably getting the chest x-ray because of concerns for respiratory distress or something, then it would definitely be worth to follow up with an echo or an ultrasound of the heart. We're about to go through some individual x-rays of each heart lesion, so let's do a quick recap of the fi five main cyanotic heart disease again. So again, the five T's, and then as a reminder, the rest of these, or PHED, FED, are also cyanotic lesions. So pulmonary atresia, hyperplastic left heart syndrome, Epstein's, and double outlet right ventricle. So let's start with one, the truncus, which would be the thumb in I love you. So according to the mnemonic, we'd expect to see increased blood volume going to the lungs. This would be because a lot of the blood from the aorta is probably also going to the lungs. 
Here, look at all this bumpiness on this side. It also looks like this baby has a right-sided aortic arch and a generous heart. If there is increased pulmonary blood flow, it's going to come back to the left atrium, which if you remember, kind of takes up that area of the silhouette. So you would see left atrial enlargement. So now we know that this is truncus, everything seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? Transposition of the great arteries is number two, or the index finger of the I love you sign. So again, often we would expect to see increased blood flow to the lungs. Here they do look a little bit darker, but I don't know if that's about the x-ray itself. The classic sign for TGA is called egg on a string, which honestly is pretty hard to actually appreciate. But the reason why it's called egg on a string is because this top part, or the superior mediastinum, is normally super narrow. And that's because in TGA, the two great vessels, the main vessels leaving the heart, which as you all know, are the aorta and the pulmonary artery, instead of being side by side, are kind of more on top of each other. So they take up a much smaller area. They're kind of superimposed on each other. So you see this area as being really skinny and then generally a generously sized heart. So it's called egg on a string. Tricuspid atresia is number three. So you would expect decreased blood flow to the lungs. This is logical as there is literally an obstruction of blood going from the right atrium to the right ventricle. So there needs to be a hole between the atria for the blood to get out of the right atrium. So normally there's an ASD or a large PFO. Obviously, because the blood has trouble getting out of the right atrium, this chamber will be a lot larger because obviously it's going to get dilated with more of the blood in there and the right ventricle will be a lot smaller. Remember, this silhouette was here and you can kind of now tell what you're looking at now. You can tell it's kind of missing. This is the one that we talk about a lot, and that is Tetralogy of Fallot. So this is number four, because it has four features, and this finger is down in I Love You. So there is decreased blood flow to the lungs. So we'd expect the lungs to be darker, which we do see here. Because there's an obstruction to blood leaving the right ventricle, ventricle, we'd expect the right ventricle to be a little bit bigger, which is making up a large part of this boot. And because there's decreased flow through the pulmonary artery, because there's an obstruction between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, we can see this kind of concave area here. So not as much blood is going through the pulmonary artery. So that's creating this kind of boot-shaped heart. And honestly, Tetralogy of Fellow, probably out of all of them, most commonly does actually look pretty boot-shaped. Number five of the mnemonic is TAPVR, or Total Anomalous pulmonary venous return. And if you remember, this is the fifth finger is going up. So again, we have increased blood flow to the lungs, at least in the supracardiac type of TAPVR. We can talk about that at some future point. That's because all the blood coming back from the lungs and the body is going to the right atrium, so or the SVC. So as you would expect, the SVC and right atrium would be a lot larger. And that's why we end up with this snowman type appearance, or like little Olaf there. Let's talk about the Epstein's malformation of the tricuspid valve, because it really is one of the few heart diseases that you can make the diagnosis of based on the chest x-ray. And you can see how absolutely massive this heart is. This is because in Epstein's, the leaflets of the tricuspid valve are attached to the ventricle. And so basically, a large part of the right side of the heart is effectively the atrium. So the atrium is massive. If you see a blue baby with this chest x-ray, you pretty much have your diagnosis. We've talked a lot so far about cyanotic lesions of the heart or heart disease where the baby looks blue. Let's touch briefly on a couple of super common acyanotic cardiac lesions, or another way of saying it, a cardiac lesion where the baby still appears pink. And this is the one we probably see the most in the NICU, which is a symptomatic patent ductus arteriosus. You all know what's happening here. The blood leaving the aorta takes a shortcut through the PDA and goes to the lungs. So the lungs can look super wet and all this extra blood is now going back to the heart, specifically the left atrium. And so the heart, especially up here, can look really big too. And that's what you see in this x-ray, wet lungs and a big heart. 
Now, this PDA was closed. There was a device closure. And you can see that already the heart is a lot smaller and the lungs seem to have gotten a lot clearer. One day after the device closure. A ventricular septal defect, or a VSD, is another super common lesion we see in the NICU, although it may take a few weeks for the VSDs to become symptomatic. In a VSD, too much blood travels through the hole in the wall between the ventricles, generally from the left ventricle to the right ventricle, and then it has like a straight route into the lungs. So the lungs can appear wetter, then all that extra blood in the lungs re returns to the left side of the heart, so the heart can look a lot bigger. Again, this is more relevant if you've had serial x-rays on the infant and you're following the size of the heart for that infant. So honestly, a VSD, we go a lot more with what the baby actually looks like than kind of the size of the heart on the x-ray. And that's cardiac x-rays. If you've reached this far, then please like the video and then go back and check out all our other cardiac lectures. Thanks so much for being here.